This morning I'm at a beaver pond, but I've yet to see a beaver. The sun is officially up now and over the trees and everything around the ponds and the marsh is starting to get lit up. This bridge here where I'm standing now is where myself and other people I know have seen the most beaver activity. Welcome back. This morning I'm at a beaver pond, but I've yet to see a beaver. There's obviously lots of geese. Um, but I know that there's a lot of beaver activity around here because this park is super close to my house. And this is where I come from my evening walks. And there's been all kinds of beavers. Um, they've been building a bunch of new lodges and some new dams. So the water level here has been changing a lot recently. And they tend to be a little bit more active in the evening. Uh, but the park's quite busy at night, so I decided to come out this morning and try my luck. I'm not taking any chances. I have binoculars today, which I tend to forget, and a bunch of different lenses. I want to see what's around here. I guess I'm going to have to move over slightly. <laughs> I don't think that was me that scared them. They've... Uh, they haven't minded me yet. There's a couple of other ducks here though. I'll take a picture of them first and then uh, I'll try and get an image of the beavers, or beavers, geese, and hopefully beaver. The goal for today is finding some beavers. I think these guys want food. <laughs> I am not gonna feed them. They don't feed wild animals. Although they're coming really close and they have some super awesome light on them. <laughs> 600 mils this close is insane. I haven't seen them. <laughs> also, I'm soaking wet now. Boys, ladies, sorry, you guys are ladies. <laughs> well, I'm all wet now from laying down in uh, the dew in the early morning grass. But, in the wise words of Simon d'Entremont, if you're going to take pictures of uninteresting subjects or animals make sure you get interesting angles so that's something i've been working on recently is particularly with birds is getting really really low um, just because it tends to be less distracting because there's less noise in the background like fight all these trees in the background uh, or different colors and when you get nice and low then the birds are more separated from their surroundings especially when you don't have a lens with the the fastest aperture like like mine which only goes to f8 um, yeah, getting low really puts a much more interesting perspective on them. And uh, these are just, I think they're just mallards, so they're just run-of-the-mill ducks. But I think a couple of those images turned out quite well, and uh, I'll credit it to just being willing to lay in the wet grass early in the morning. I've decided I'm happy enough with the images of the ducks. I'm not going to bother taking images of Canadian geese this morning. They're not really in the light. and. They're everywhere, so I could have another opportunity to do that. That being said, this is the first evidence of um, the beavers. That lodge has been there for a while, like years, um, but they have kind of revamped it <laughs> this summer and this spring. Um, and then as I go along the pond here, there'll be lots more dams and lodges. So fingers crossed. Someone just walked by and told me that they never see beavers in the morning, which is quite likely, I suppose. They're probably more active in the evening, uh, but I have high hopes because it's a really nice morning and it was really cold last night and it rained a bit. Um, so maybe they want to get outside. The sun is officially up now and over the trees and everything around the ponds and the marsh is starting to get lit up. 
Um, so now I'm gonna start hustling towards the beavers because one thing that, oh, I can't, I can't walk and talk because of light. <clears throat> one thing that is tough about living where I do, we don't really have many, we have no mountains and not very many hills. Um, so when you're in the forests, it's really hard to predict when the light will be shining in. Like it's uh, an hour and a half, almost two hours after sunrise. And only now there's light hitting me just because the trees are so tall and dense that light doesn't always shine through. But if we had mountains, then you know, you could get above all the trees um, and be able to predict it better. But I don't have that luxury, um, but at least I got to sleep in a bit more this morning. Here's the, the main beaver lodge, but I'm gonna walk around to the other side because the lighting here is way too harsh to get a pleasing image of it or any beavers that may appear. Most of the beaver activity has been around here um, at these two lodges in front of me, but also sort of at the, the bridge that's behind me. And I'm thinking that those people who told me there's a lot less activity in the morning I'm starting to believe they were telling the truth. It even sounds quieter. Really the only thing I can hear is geese. <laughs> but I will stay here for quite a while and survey around. They like to, at least in the evening, so it could be true for the morning as well, um, just based on the temperature and the light, um, that they might be in the grasses um, eating. So I'll have to be scanning through everything. <laughs> I haven't seen any movement yet. First scan of the surroundings, nothing. No signs of beavers. And now I have to decide how long is an acceptable amount of time to stay here and hedge my bets that one will show up here or decide to go down a little bit farther um, where I could also have a chance of seeing them. It's all a little bit of a gambling game. Oh, there's a cute little bumblebee in front of me. Hello, little guy. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry. But also, more and more people are gonna show up as the day starts. It's also a long weekend, um, so today's a holiday. And I don't like standing in the middle of the trail when lots of people start coming by. But. We'll see how long I can tough it out for. Just accidentally stumbled across an image that I think actually works really well. And I'll try and show you, sort of reenact what happened, but I don't know how well it'll come across. But I was focused on the beaver lodge and then I was just panning my camera across the scene in front of me just to see if I could see any movement um, in the water. Cause that tends to be how I find beavers is just based on the ripples as they glide through and no beavers, but I had focused on the lodge and I hadn't refocused. So as I was panning across the, the pond, all the lily pads were out of focus, but they're being hit directly by the light right now. So they had, they were really, really bright and shiny. And then there was like dark contrast with the water. And because they're out of focus, you can't tell what they are. And it's insanely abstract, but I think it actually looks like a pretty decent image. So I'll share that with you now. He migrated from the houses that were flooded there. Good morning. 1998. Hey, have fun. Thank you. Enjoy your morning. Yeah. So for the last half an hour, I've been standing here observing everything. The geese have flown away. I've captured one abstract image and I've been chatting to a lot of morning walkers. Yet I still haven't seen any beavers and everyone's telling me that I won't see them in the morning which is fair, <laughs> I should trust them, but I don't because I've seen them here in the morning before. I think what I'm gonna do now, there's a whole bunch of really pretty lily pads and, and grasses sort of along the, the shore here. And I'm gonna take another abstract image of them. And I'm just waiting for the sun to come up a little bit higher and shine light on the pond on the other side of a bridge over there. Uh, once that lights up, I'll head over there and see if I have any more luck over there with, with wildlife or, or beavers in particular. So, side note, 
I absolutely just love chatting to random people. <laughs> I know it's not exclusively a Canadian thing, uh, but at least on the East Coast, everyone is like super friendly and wants to talk to you. And it's one of my favorite things ever. This image that I have framed up, um, <laughs> I'm still using my telephoto lens, which is absolutely overkill for this kind of image. Um, but it does work and I don't want to change my lenses again. So what I've found is a scene where there's one lily pad that is like six times larger than all the other ones around it. And yet it's still surrounded by a lot of the smaller ones. So I've placed the big lily pad in the center of the frame and then surrounded by smaller lily pads on the edges. And some of those other lily pads have water droplets on them. And it's pretty simple, but it's, it's, it's nice. It compositionally, it's, it's quite pleasing. Um, and there's some nice colors in it. So I hope you enjoy it. This bridge here where I'm standing now is where myself and other people I know have seen the most beaver activity. It's not looking too good right now though. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert some clips of beavers that I took last night and we're all gonna pretend like I'm taking them right now. It's so nice being able to see beavers and birds. I hope I get to see some more. I think I've noticed um, as I've been here like today and just for the last couple weeks because I'm here quite often is I haven't heard any frogs recently or even seen any. And something one of the gentlemen um, that I just spoke to mentioned is that <laughs> about uh, maybe a month ago, a group of four otters just swam through here and cleared out everything so that would explain why there's not many frogs left and it also makes me super jealous because i would love to see some otters i've never seen otters in the wild i've seen things that i thought were otters uh, but then turned out to be muskrats because sometimes they look similar I, or i just don't know the difference <laughs> um, but yeah i'd love to see some some otters around here would be incredible it's been really cold the last like two weeks overnight and first thing in the morning and we're starting to see the first signs of fall. Uh, oh, it's gonna be terribly hard to see, but there's some red on a tree over there. Those leaves are changing over here and right here as well. And I'm excited. I find that spring, great time to take pictures. Winter, amazing time. Fall, the best time. Middle of the summer when everything is green, not necessarily the best, but as the leaves change, things are going to get more interesting and I've taken some nice images in the fall that I like in the past but I've never captured any that are like spectacular so my goal for this year really capture the the essence of the fall colors because they're spectacular in New Brunswick. I keep getting unnecessarily excited because there's lots of like old fallen trees in here and a lot of them look like birds or even beavers and I keep oh that could be something and I zoom in and look at it with my binoculars and it's a tree there's a surprising lack of activity this morning. I can hear crickets. No birds. The geese aren't here anymore. Very calm and still, but calm and still is not what I was hoping for this morning. I was hoping for some fun hustle and bustle. I've made a mistake because I thought I was taking gonna be taking pictures of animals all day. I had my ISO up pretty high. So every image I've taken is at ISO 4000, which should be okay if everything is exposed properly. But if I, if I have to start bringing up shadows, I might be in trouble. So I guess it's a good thing I've only taken three or four images today. But on the bright side, there is a little frog right down here. And that's the only activity I've seen. So I'm gonna capture an image of him. So it's quite hard I, I'm, I apologize if, I, if I'm silhouetted. Um, it's quite hard to take an image of this frog where he is right now because he's green, everything around him is green, and there's not much contrast for the autofocus to work. So what I'm doing is I'm framing it up the best I can 
um, in autofocus. And then fine tuning the focus um, in manual mode just to really ensure that I capture exactly what I'm hoping to. And I'm shooting at uh, 500th of a second, f6.4, ISO 1250. I also think I'm going to turn my camera vertically here just because there's a little patch of grass behind the frog that I think looks quite good and I think I'd like it to be in the image. So we'll try this real fast. Yes, that is certainly better. Let's lock that in. I'll admit that I'm a little bit disappointed about the photography this morning, but there's really not much I can do if, if the wildlife's not being super active. I can come at a different time of day, but there's still no guarantee, so I won't beat myself up over it, but I think I still got a, a few images that I like. Um, the frog's kind of cool. And then the abstract images of, of the lily pads may turn out <laughs> if the ISO is not cranked up too high. But now I'm just excited to get out again next time. I have to call it here for the day, but uh, my next photography editing will be just as fun, maybe more successful. And just a few minutes ago, a gentleman named Charles Betts walked by and we chatted for quite a while, really nice fella. And he does poetry, so he left me a little business card that has a little poem on it. So I'll share that with you guys now, and I guess that's how I will end the video for today. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.